<sighs> Battling your bed every night? Why? Because you like tossing and turning on that old lumpy mattress you've had since graduation? No, get a Purple mattress. Only Purple has the grid. It's amazingly supportive and cushions your curves no matter how you sleep. Plus, Purple's 100-night trial guarantees a great night's sleep every night or your money back. Stop battling your bed. Get Purple. For a limited time, save up to $350 on select mattresses and bedding at purple.com slash sleep in. Terms apply. Well, you know, for my childhood, uh, Derek Jeter was definitely an icon of it, and I got to know him for years. And here on the Sports Hour with Alex Garrett, I don't know if you heard me the other night, but I was so excited when uh, Derek Jeter got in. I didn't even care that he get, didn't get unanimous. I just was so happy he was in for the second year in a row. A Yankee icon is going to Cooperstown. And someone who I know personally around the stadium, Rick Cerrone, the former PR man for the Yankees, joins me. Rick, I don't know if you remember me, but I was there with Mr. Steinbrenner for years, and you were very nice to me and my dad every time we saw you. Alex, I remember you. I remember your dad. Let's just say you were unforgettable. So, and you knew Jeter more than my dad oh, and yeah. I did. So give us a few stories here that, that people may not know. Well, well, first of all, I'm so happy that you dove right into Derek Jeter, the man, the player. Uh, I've done some other interviews, and we never even got to Jeter because everybody wants to focus on the one voter or the one vote he didn't get, which I really don't think is relevant. Uh, he went in with 99% of the vote, which is a phenomenal accomplishment, well-deserved. I mean, Alex, uh, you know, I, I first met Jeter – uh, Derek, probably the first day of spring training, you know, when he arrived over at Legends Field uh, for spring training in 96, which was my first year. <laughs> Excuse me. It was his rookie season. And the thing that struck me right away about him was that he, he didn't seem like a rookie. Uh, he, he carried himself like a, like a veteran. And I, I defy anyone to show me in all his years with the Yankees where he made a mistake on the field. Now he'll made an error, you know, but, uh, he didn't make mental mistakes. He was a tremendous leader. Uh, you know, I mean, he, when I say a tremendous leader, he wasn't that rah, rah, let's go get him kind of player, but you know, he, he almost willed his team to win. He, he was a winner as you well know. Sure. And, um, I think Joe Torrey said it best, you know, defense, even defensively, you know, two outs in the ninth, you want the ball hit the Jeter. Well, you know, Rick, you were the PR uh, manager for the Yankees during that height of, of Jeter's era. So I got to ask you, how many requests would you get for him alone uh, during the course of a day? Oh, well, I don't know if I could give you a number, but it's very interesting, Alex, that, you know, he certainly topped the list. But, you know, we, we, had a, we were a traveling all-star team. I mean, so there were so many people that got re requests for different things. And one of my jobs was to screen them. And knowing things that he might not be comfortable doing, knowing things that, you know, we as the Yankees would, would not want him to do. Uh, you know, we tried to accommodate everybody. Not everyone was Sports Illustrated or the Today Show or 60 Minutes or whoever you'd want to put in the upper echelon. And you tried to take care of the little guy, too. And he did that. I don't remember Derek ever saying no. No, I'm like, you know, no, I don't want to do that. I, I don't remember that. Um, and he, here's the thing that stands out, aside from the typical traditional media request that, that um, you know, players would get. I mean, you know, you know this. In the dugout, you know, we're kids all the time, whether they're make-a-wish kids, kids of sponsors. And he was so good with all of them. With, with whatever it had to do, and he never said no to anything like that, meeting a, a, a troubled kid or a kid from a troubled family or, you know, someone that was having an issue or, you know, we got these requests a tremendous amount of time, especially after 9-11. And, you know, he stepped up. There was one situation in particular that I was involved in with a little nine-year-old girl and, you know, everybody did their thing. Everybody did what was expected of them. But the great thing about Derek, Alex, was that he always did more than was expected. That, and, that's what made him special. And that is when so he, true. He went beyond them and above, didn't he? 
Yeah, and you you know that yourself. But um, like, um, you know, I, I'll tell you a story real quick about a young lady who was eight years old in 2002. Uh, nine years old, and you know the, the family w- wanted to bring her to spring training because her father was tragically killed on 9/11, and um, you know of course we said yes, and she wanted to meet Derek Jeter, and you know I told Derek, and of course he says yeah, no problem. He knew what it was. You didn't have to remind him. So we brought her down when she arrived at Legends Field, and she's sitting in the first row of an empty ballpark next to the dugout. And I think I'm going to be the good PR guy and kind of walk over to Derek, who's on the field, on his back, stretching with, you know, the, with those rubber bands and sure, everything. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I kind of walk so she can't see. And I say, you know, the, you know, not, not moving my lips, Derek, the little girl that you're going to meet is sitting over there, you know, with the blue Yankee jacket on and the Yankee hat. So whenever you're done, you know, th- that's who she is. So he can kind of acknowledge her without having to be in well. I don't even get two feet away from him, and he yells out from behind me, Hey, Kate, get over here. You're late. We're stretching. Come on. Let's go. She runs out on the field. They lift her over the stand. She runs out. She goes, hey, you know, Get down here. And he gives her the rubber band, and now, hey, this is Mariano, and this is Roger, this is Jorge. And, and it, it, was, it was an unbelievable experience. And then he sits with her, and he talks to her. And he says to her, do you go to Yankee games? Oh, yeah, I go all the time and start kind of tearing up because she went with her dad. And he goes, well, listen, I don't want you to ever come to a Yankee game and not let me know you're there. So you you tell Mr. Cerrone here when you're coming and he'll let me know and I'll know you're there and I'll try to see you if I can. And, you know, that's what happened. And um, other people did what was expected. He always did more than was expected. 